pick from. So next four is rarely used, and sometimes it is asked uh, to be classified uh, uh, the way customs examiners test on this, and they just ask word for word. And pretty much what it says, if it cannot be classified according to any of those rules, you classify it akin to those rules. So you kind of go back. And there is not much, it's not you use much, it's just there just in case. Uh, I just read it. I know the verbiage. In case customers ask, they can give you the words, right, quotation. And they say, this is, provides for G, and you have five answer choices, and one of them says GRI4. You, you just pick that one. This is the only way I can see it being tested. GRI5 provides for containers. I have a container which is which pa which is uh, packed. Uh, I don't know plastic container which packs those three markers. I have all those markers again. The question is, do I need to classify this container separately or not? Okay, what do you think? Plastic container, you know, with those markers. How about this? Hey, check this out. Paper. Let me switch to paper, more environmentally conscious. I have a bunch of markers here. Do I need to classify, when I bring in the, this product, I classify markers, and I classify paper box, or just classify markers? Markers, we have a box. We have a the box. So the answer to this is GRI5, which says if it comes in a normal containers, in the usual containers, right, that it normally comes with, it's okay. Meaning that it, it is, it, it, you don't worry about containers. Sorry? It's full of markers, exactly. and it's a box. It so the invoice breakdown says markers, ten mar twelve markers. Cost twenty cents per each. Box five cents. What do you do? Do you declare box as a, as a Box comes in chapter 48, as packaging containers. Do you declare that or not? Is it, the question, is it, norm, the, is it normal for markers to, to come, to reach the ultimate consumer in this box? Yeah, it's normal. So you don't worry about the box. That's the rule. Yeah. And the rule says GRI5, it's a containers. Containers, rule about containers. So the point is, if it's a usual container that comes with the article, then you classify it as it was part of that, as it is, it is, it is uh, that article, okay? So you need to declare the ori origin of the country, right? Country of origin? Yes. It's a marking issue. No, you don't worry about, mar marking is separate. Marking of containers is a separate rule. You have to, uh, you, you confuse, we're not talking about the harmonized service schedule only. Right? So the idea is, we do classify this together or separately as a separate line item. And if it's normal, then no. What if I bring coffee cup in the marker box inside? I just put it in, wrap it up, and somehow stick it in. Or how about this? I bring in my plug in the box, and I come to you guys, licensed custom broker, clear this plug for me, please. What are you going to say? First of all, it's not a plug, it's a napkin. And second of all, if it comes in the box with the markers, you have to declare marker box separately from the so-called plug, aka napkin, because it is not a usual container. Napkins don't usually come in the marker boxes. And that's when you declare two HTS numbers. What if it is, uh, I have a tripod 
it comes in this case. Do I this case can be uh, quite expensive. It, it's not in this situation, but uh, is this case, do I declare separately when I import tripod from the case or not? Is it a usual, is it normal for ultimate consumers? I'm an ultimate consumer. Focus is always on ultimate consumer, guys. Ultimate consumer can be just just a regular guy on the street, or it can be a commercial uh, distributor, manufacturer, right? It all depends. But if it's normal to go to the store and buy a tripod and carry it out with this, then it is classified as, as uh, with that, yes, exactly. So you kind of include the price of the container and the price of the good and you declare it as that. Next, what if I have a nice gun? Nice gun, they usually come in those nice cases, very expensive. Sometimes case is more expensive than a gun. Would that be declared separately? Why? Is it the usual container? Yes, it is. It's a nice gun. It's a nice case. For that, if it was a cheap gun, right? So again, don't be fooled by, the, you have to, use, if it's usual for that very nice gun, it's a collection, piece of art, yeah. to be used with that case, no problem. However, it was just a regular gun, I don't know, the one you buy in Kmart. I don't know if you can buy those anymore in Kmart. <laughs> I, I remember there was a gun section. Yeah. You can? In the state of New York, you can do that? Uh, upstate New York. Upstate? Okay, so you go upstate New York, with a nice case, you buy a gun, then you go to Canada hunting, you come back, and uh, you can prove that the country of origin is, is the United States. So you are required to pay duty and enter. Enter. How do you enter this? You enter this separately, because with a Kmart gun, nice uh, case with jewels in it and all that other stuff, it's just, just not usual. Yeah. So the usual containers. So container rule is if it you normally comes with a type of articles like milk, plastic plastic milk gallon bags, right? If it normally comes with a, uh, with that articles, then it, it assumes that article, right? It's it's part it becomes that article. If it's not, if it's odd, then it is not. It, it is declared separately. GRI six we used it already. It is all these GRIs, uh, you mostly GRI 1, 2, 3 rules, but you apply them at not the heading level, because first question we ask is the heading, right, first four digits, but we ask them at the subheading level. So when we move on, GRI 6 tells us, if we have, if we figure out that, so we apply GRI 1, and by say, is this a virgin oil or not a virgin oil? For olive, right? But then once we move out, we decide, okay, it's a virgin oil, right? We're no longer in a heading. We're out of GRI 1. Because GRI 1 only says what matters, heading, no subheading, no, no, no subheading. Section notes and chapter notes. So GRI 6 pretty much codifies this into this level. It says, look, if you use this at, at, at the top level, why don't we adopt the same strategy at this level? However, there's a caveat. You cannot compare weight, you, you, you cannot compare, uh, you have to figure out that it is 18 kilos or more before you de decide labeling or other, right? So let's say if you have a certified organic oil, but it comes into the container which are 20 kilos. GRI 6, so you have 20 kilo, 20 kilo organic version. 
And this is a trap, guys. Many students fall into this because they do not know the concepts of GRI6. I'm sorry to hold you up, but I'm almost done. Many people, and this is a, also an answer. Label it as certified organic, right? And they also say extra version. Extra. In 20 kilo packages. Can you pick this? No, because it is, you have to deal with this question first. Right? And GRI 6 says, you can compare, right, headings like we've done before. But you have to follow the rules. You have to follow this step by step, right? Here, this is a step. So, so, so first step is, is this. Then step is this. Then step is this. Then step is this. Right? And every time you have to compare it with one or the other. So here you have to compare 18 kilos with other, which are more than 18 kilos, right? After you figure it out, you go to the next question, which is 18 kilos. You, we know it's 20 kilos, so this is wrong. We forget about this. Now we go certified organic. Okay, certified organic. So now, is it labeled as extra version? Yes. Okay. There you go. Everyone follows this? So it must be done at the same level. So the GRI 6 says same level. Apply GRI before. Okay? Headings, you don't need to worry about this because headings are at the same, presumed at the same level, right? General level. But here, you have to go by step by step. You cannot, you cannot skip the step. If you skip, you get the wrong answer. I guarantee it. So that's, that's, that's the brief overview of principles of classification.